Tesla just flipped the self-driving game upside down. Can you believe they stripped out 300,000 lines of code in the new update? And surprisingly, that makes it work better. It's counterintuitive, but I'm gonna explain why in this video. Now we're talking end-to-end -end AI, one gigantic neural network to rule them all. The input is video from the camera, the output is the steering controls and pedals. In between, there's no more bottlenecks and no more safeguards depending on how you look at it. And Elon Musk recently took the newest version of full self-driving out on a live stream. And he drives to Mark Zuckerberg's house and then back again, which is kind of a troll move. But it definitely showed off how smooth a system like this can be, surprisingly removing all of that generated code. But it shows how much more human the car can act when you remove all that code and let a neural network do the work. Gone are the days of neural networks for red light detection, lane changes, or detecting rain to turn on the windshield wipers. Teslas are now pure, unadulterated, artificial intelligence. But you know what's even crazier about this change? Tesla's pulling off the beginning of a flywheel effect where you can start bolting on all sorts of new opportunities. Wrap your mind around this, for example. Imagine your car chauffeuring people around like a human driver, making you money on the side because it's part of a robo-taxi network like Uber. And the most mind-blowing thing is to imagine chatting with your car as if it's chat GPT. Yeah, in the not so distant future, we're going to have a self-driving car that you can just have a conversation with a friend. Language represents what I think will be a key pillar for how we interact with intelligent machines and robotics in the future. So this prototype gives us an example of what's about to happen when you bolt a large language model's latent space onto a self-driving model's latent space and they start working together. So imagine in a few years, you're in your Tesla, hands on your lap, just saying, hey Tesla, what are you gonna do next? And it replies, I'm gonna wait till the traffic light turns green and then proceed. Or if you want confidence that it sees the person on the bike in front of you, you can ask it a question like this. What are you watching out for? For the man on the right with the shorts who's waiting to cross the street. How cool is that, that it can see and understand that? It's like, oh my God. Wow. Imagine asking if you can turn left here. Plies no, because there's a no turn left sign under the light. How, how human is that? So the podcaster David Lee just had on James Dama, who is an AI expert and specializes in knowing what Tesla's up to. Now, James is clearly an expert in this industry and his nuanced understanding of Tesla was so fascinating. This thing is full of gems. This software upgrade is actually worth talking about. I think there is something we can all learn from this. Side note, I would love to talk to this guy, but on Twitter, he doesn't have a way to connect to him. So if you happen to know any way to get a hold of James Dama, feel free to email me at curiousvideoscontact at gmail. Just to put into perspective what we're actually talking about here, if you go to Dolly or Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, you can type in a text and then you get an image that represents what that text described, right? Tesla's used AI for all sorts of little pieces in the system, but they've never had the whole thing end to end one giant network. But now it's cameras in, steering wheel out, one giant neural network in between. Elon describes it as photons in and then controls out because it's also the gas pedal and things like that. And he likes to use the word photons because they're cool. But basically that replaced 300,000 in lines of well-engineered code that has been running the heuristics, the rules that have normally governed a whole lot of the system when it's self-driving before. That's gotta be sort of a hard decision. I would imagine maybe hundreds of millions of dollars have gone into engineering that code. But look, this is the power of neural networks. I mean, this is where the direction of the industry is going. And at some point, Tesla probably had to do this anyway, so they might as well just get it out of the way now. And as far as quality and security and safety, there's some trade-offs to think about. Traditionally hand-engineered code is much more explainable when something goes wrong. A lot of times we describe these AI models as sort of black box models because they get good at sort of statistical or averaging out the right answer, but you sometimes can't really get in there and figure out why it did something specifically. It's also a different paradigm. If you have an error that causes an accident and is a serious issue, you used to be able to go to the code and figure out what it was. What are you having it do and what should you have it do in the future so that doesn't happen again? Now, kind of like a brain surgeon, go poke around in there and figure out what's going on, or in most cases, never actually figure out what's going on, but just show it way more examples of what you do want it to do until it just forgets how to do the bad thing. So from a safety perspective, in the short run, it actually kind of feels more risky. But in the long run, I know that that kind of neural network can learn the sort of safety protocols from the camera, the right decisions to make to keep someone safe better than anybody could ever hand code it. So this is the right direction. But in some sense, it's still like a student driver and it's gotta go through its learning process. And the other weird thing is that now you have this one neural network that's making all the driving decisions. The system is going to do things that you didn't expect it to do, and we're gonna have to go in and try to figure out what is it that it's actually doing inside. And the reason I'm happy Tesla made this decision now is because 
that's a skill set that essentially nobody in the world has yet, but I know literally for the future of humanity that we need to get in there and explain, like we need what's called explainable AI to kind of probe around in these neural networks and figure out why are they shaped the way they are? And like, what does that mean? And how can you kind of tweak it and change it to get improvements? In theory, you could describe what it is when I'm thinking of the Eiffel Tower that's actually happening in the brain. What is it activating and why and where is it in relation to everything else? But that's not a science we have nailed down yet. And that's kind of the way that we need to think about this new upgrade that Tesla's rolling out. Where in the network does it store information about red lights and green lights? We need to develop better tools for understanding that. So I'm kind of happy Tesla has that problem now, especially because it's connected to safety, which is critical to their company. Literally their finances are aligned with explainable AI. And I think that'll be great for all of us. I also want that conversation to be out there more because I think a lot of these systems are highly intelligent, like way more intelligent than we give them credit for because we don't really see them functioning in all these normal ways that we call intelligence. But as they dig around in there and they really start to understand how a Tesla's self-driving car has a three-dimensional worldview and understands what kind of people are paying attention and what aren't, we're gonna start figuring out all these fascinating things just about the way the brain and human intelligence works. A few other fascinating gems from this podcast. At one point, James talks about how because there's cameras on all the corners of the Tesla, when you look at what's called the vector space, which is what's on screen, it's like the video game version of your car with a bird's eye view looking down, that's constructed in real time from patching together the different cameras around the car. And just by building that bird's eye view, Tesla was able to bring in a full understanding of what the three-dimensional world looks like. Maybe that already registered with you as kind of obvious, but for me, I'm so used to seeing all this stuff coming out of NVIDIA called NERF technology. They're neural radiance fields, and what they're meant to do is take a 2D image, like a photograph of something, and kind of reconstruct what's behind it in three dimensional space and let you sort of rotate around it. And of course, Tesla wants to know more information than just the cameras can see. So if it sees a person, same way we do, we can make a pretty good guess as to what the other side of their body looks like. But early on when Tesla was looking at this Nerf technology, they were just like, oh, actually the bird's eye view patching this all together gives us everything we could have got from that. So we're done, you know? And I was just like, oh, yeah, I guess AI can just figure out that it's in a three-dimensional space because of the way the cameras actually are in three-dimensional space and they bring in information. Another fascinating little knowledge bomb. So in any version before the newest one, there was already a really powerful neural network that looked at the cameras and it knew what was happening. And that's because it used supervised learning, which is where people go in and tag, that's a stop sign, that's a red light, that's a green light, that's a pedestrian, that's a car. And the network learns from a much stronger signal, one that's reinforced from human thinking. Now they talk a little bit about how much that can be copied over to the other system because it's a different neural network, but there is what they call latent information that should be transferable. But James predicts that that network is still gonna be sitting in the next version of the Teslas because it's from that neural network that the display is updating all of the stuff that the human driver looks at. And it's also the network that's already built to connect to the planning module, which is when you actually navigate somewhere and you say, hey, take me to this restaurant. And it goes out and looks at GPS and map data and figures out where you're actually going, not just how to drive the car there. So it's just fascinating to think that there's this new end-to-end -end system and then there's the original system that's making the vector space and it's talking to the navigation and that these things converge and they're kind of learning from each other. And that opens up the thought of, oh, that's why it can also converge with a latent space from a large language model like ChatGPT. So maybe once Elon gets done building that, that, that plugs right into and then we have these just perfectly human conversations with our car. I'm starting to envision a day where you can just walk up to your Tesla. The cameras activate because there's motion moving towards it. They instantly see your face. That is your key. It knows who you are and who other people are and not to let them in, but let you in. And the Tesla can see that you're wearing business casual and that it's 8 a.m. and you're probably going to work. So it's like, oh, we off to work, Bob. And you're like, yep, let's do it. Like imagine the cars are like, come find me. And the robo taxis know who the person is and only unlock the door for the person that actually paid to go for a ride. The people who deliver food, they're all tagged in this system. It probably can even see what food's in the trunk if it's doing deliveries. Then the same technology goes into the semi truck and then it goes into the humanoid robot. And straight up Elon takes over the entire world with Tesla. This is Elon Musk live streaming for 45 minutes, the new end to end AI inside of a Tesla. Uh, again, there is no line of code that says uh, give clearance to bicyclists. It is just doing what people do. I mean, our brains go from eyes to hands and then hands take the controls. This goes right from the eyes to the controls. It, 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 it can read science without ever being taught to read. That is a crazy thing to think about. It can read signs without being taught to read. Because what he's getting at there is there's pattern recognition. When you see a stop sign, 
it has learned that the brake is always applied and the car comes to a rolling or full stop and then, but it's translating from the road sign, not to English, but directly to pedal and steering wheel. It's cool, man. It just pulls over and parks. Could uh, delete the navigation system, simply give it a GPS point and say, get to this GPS point somehow. We're not gonna tell you how. It's, you could say like, you see that building in the distance? Go there. Okay, he says that in the future you can point to something and say go there. If the internal camera that's watching the human actually could grab the finger and point, I don't know if that's what he meant, but if you described it so that the large language model could convert into the images and you said take me to that green building on the right, I think it could take you there. Make, Make sure, sure to charge up that subscribe button. button. Help, Help me get, get to 7,000 subs.